when she passed, I had this empty moment that I wasn't helping her. She was helping me. I mean, I won one of the awards, 4,500 CEOs apply, I, I get the award. That's what I'm saying. Running a successful business doesn't mean you can't help people. It means you can help more people. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Welcome to another Safika Broth podcast. We have an amazing brother to us, uh, a brother to the Safi Bros. <laughs> yes, Sir Zaki. I'm going to let him introduce himself, mashallah. Quite an accomplished uh, brother internationally. So I'm going to give the floor to our brother, yes, Sir. Assalamu alaikum, yes. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you for having me. You know, we always in, enjoy our chat. Amen. Amen. And I'm more than happy to introduce myself a bit so everyone just get a bit of a feel of what I do. Um, my name is Yasser Zaki. Um, I'm the global CEO of Tender Love and Care Group. Um, the group is formed of seven different entities um, operating in eight different countries, sure including well. Australia, and um, and grow and going from strength to strength. Allah strengthen you. Allah. Thank you. Mashallah. And also, uh, you're well studied as well. I think you've got a PhD. Yes, so I've got multiple degrees actually um, in in my field now, which is health, disability. Uh, but also I've got an engineering degree um, prior to getting into this line of work. So. Subhanallah, mashallah. We're going to go through that, inshallah. But I think it'd be beautiful just that introduction. Uh, may Allah bless you for all the hard work you do and the khair and mashallah, the disability field is something, mashallah, you've been a, a great uh, help for the industry. You're a great ambassador for Australia wide, mashallah. And I know you, we've had these discussions previously about all the hard work you've done uh, as groundwork for so many brothers and sisters that have benefited from your and Allah, you know, your work, Allah, Allah, barik fikum. Allah bless you in your and dua. Um, so today, alhamdulillah, we're here for your success story, mashallah, and Allahumma barik fik. Um, mashallah, you're yeah. quite well accomplished in what you've done, and and we're here, inshallah, to share um, our trials and tribulations uh, throughout time as brothers, uh, uh, to showcase to our brothers and sisters out there listening and watching us. Uh, uh, what it takes to get to a global CEO position, what it takes mentally, physically, and the good times and the bad times, the hardships, the, the lows, the the highs, the celebrations, you know, that we've had, as, as every one of us, I think, understands sitting here. <laughs> but I think we really want to project that to our brothers and sisters out there that are listening. Um, before I get you to start, I'm going to remind our viewers, inshallah, please make sure you subscribe and share and make sure also that you put in some commentary asking us uh, some questions that we can maybe you haven't answered on this podcast so we can also get back to you. Yeah. So welcome. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, I think we want to start with you not being born in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's very obvious in the accent. Uh, look at that, you know. Welcome to Australia. <laughs> yeah. So I, I was born in Egypt. I'll give you a bit of uh, what that means. I grew in Egypt up until high school. Then I moved to Dubai to finish my university degree. My dad was um, uh, an international judge, so he traveled a bit around and his last post was in Dubai and that's Hello. why I finished my university there. So um, coming to Australia was a wild card that I pulled as a, as a young person where my dad is very traditional. You stay with the family, you stick around and... And how, build your, how many in the family, if you don't mind? So I've got two brothers and a sister. I'm the youngest boy. And wow. then my sister came 12 years after. Inshallah. And they're all in Australia now? No, no, no one. I don't have any family directly oh, in Australia. Wow. I just have like my immediate family. But as as my um, parents and, and siblings or uncles, aunties, they all overseas. So, so what made you even think of kangaroo land? Um, it's, it's, I came here in 2000, um, around the... You know the olympics back then and uh, it was just a holiday and i loved it wow so um, it was a holiday it was initially a holiday i didn't live here at the time i studied in um university of wollongong dubai campus wow and it was just it made sense to me to come to australia at the time um my family are all in the states if i wanted to leave i could have gone to some of my uncles in in the states but i'm just this person that likes to do things differently and, <laughs> I, and I had this um this idea in my head that I want to make it on my own Love it. and Australia was a place that I knew no one so it was time for me to go and and that's where um you know um I built a family I built a uh, um, work future career everything was was actually by coming to Australia so wow Allah. everything that matters anyway in the in Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. did you have some kind of draw to it like was there some kind of you know, drew you here do you think or is this like <laughs> 
It's the lifestyle. When I came here, um, it was very important to me to to see what what it means to live with other people. Um, that you might come from a different background, but how welcomed would you feel? And I did feel very welcomed in Australia. So, um, I how, could, how old were you? I was twenty three. Twenty three. Yeah. When you I lived, so here. so you came to study, or you came on holiday? First? No. So I came on holidays in two thousand. At yep. the time, I was only twenty. Twenty. Um, and then I moved. Um, here in 2004. Sydney, so, Melbourne? Sydney. Why Sydney? It was the Olympics and that's where I holidayed. So oh, wow. I just <laughs> came okay. to where I knew. So wow. I had a lot. Yeah. And before then, what were you doing? Just career so, path? St- what? Studying. All so studying. I did a bit of work in, in tourism in Egypt uh, while I was studying. Okay. Um, I've, I was always driven by business, creativity, uh, trial and error, risk taking, that kind of mindset. Inshallah. Um, and I've always taken steps towards that. And tourism was a, a hot space in Egypt at the time. And I wow. thought, I'll do it. And I was always a people's person. I, I loved talking to people. I loved, you know, connecting um, and, and, you know, learning. And Inshallah. tourism was a, a, a beautiful space to be in because you meet people from different, you know, uh, countries and no, and you can actually learn how things happen yeah. in different countries. So that, dad was a judge. Dad was a judge. So how is it living with a judge? I've never like I've, I want to ask that question because dad, <laughs> dad is a judge. That's a tough one. Uh, with a smile on my face, <laughs> intensive. <laughs> that means anything. Look, my dad was um, a, a very wise man, but very strict, and and his strict wasn't about. You know, don't go out and don't do this kind of stuff. It was about you have to always be um, clear about what you want in life. That was a big thing for him. Like, so. you know, if you go somewhere, why are you doing it? Why do you want to do that? Why do you want to study this? And he's he'd always ask that question. And if you don't have the answer, take go back, work it out, and come back and tell me. Wow. So, and this is something I've taken from him. So I do that a lot. Um, if you don't have the answer, you're not ready. So Amen. work on your Amen. answer first. Oh, wow. I love that. I love Come back that. to the I intention. Love yeah. I love that. That's intention. Really, yeah. pretty much his intention. He's yeah, back. Well, why are you doing that? Yeah. 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 That's yeah. awesome. I love it. So you landed in Australia. You, you've you decided Sydney's the place. And yes. Take us through there. Take us. what? what, what? Well, um, when I first came, obviously, I came with uh, in mind that I'll be a computer engineer. I finished my degree in, in the University of Wollongong. That's where I'm going to this is the career path, right? I'm ready to <laughs> take on the role, role really, you know. <laughs> and um, But I discovered that it was harder than I thought um, <laughs> and I couldn't find a job in my space. Um, That's after finishing your degree? Yeah, yeah. And it was a bit purely, you didn't have local experience. Yeah, Every time you don't have a local is. experience. You know? lot, so I'm like, well, how do I get a local experience if no one's giving me the local <laughs> experience? And then, um, and at the time I, I started, you know, um, connecting closer with, with my wife and, and getting married and had my first kid when we were, um, he, he was born six months. So we, before I even knew it, I had a kid and wow. now I have to work and I can't find a job in the career that I wanted. So you met your wife in Sydney? Oh, so I met her in Egypt. Wow. Um, she's a relative of my best friend, but she was born in Australia. And then when I came here, you so know, well, well, and, um, and then, then I had to work and uh, worked at Nick's Cardi Furniture. Um, first job, first job ever. Nick Scarly. Yeah, I, was, uh, um, I ended up being. Oh, I started in, as a salesperson, became a, a store manager, and then an area manager, and then got offered the state management, and then that's when I decided. Oh, so you moved through the ranks there. How long did that take you? Four years. Four years. That's Four amazing. Years. Four years. So man, yeah. sales does something to you, doesn't it? Look, when I first got it, I was, I was happy and unhappy. Happy because. When I first came and I couldn't find work, everyone said, you know, do certain jobs. It's not a shame in doing certain jobs, but I went to uni and I did a lot of work in uni. I want to work in what I studied. Yeah, <laughs> yes. And then everyone said, like, work at a petrol station, do cleaning. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just not what I came for. Subhanallah. And um, so Nick Scali was a, a happy medium where you still wore the suit and the tie and you got the job, but it's still sales and it's not exactly what I wanted. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't satisfied, but I needed it, you know, and, and sometimes... Um, you know, you prioritize, and and when you have a family, and you start having to making to make the hard choices, yeah. and you know, I can't say it was the hardest choice that I had to make, but it was not particularly at the time is what I wanted to do. I just did something to, you know, to, put, to provide to provide to put provide. bread on the, on the table. Um, and that was that was a 
that at that time I didn't appreciate it and I can tell you now it's the best thing that I've done. Subhanallah, yes. Because being a migrant, that English is a textbook English. So you're not street savvy in the language. Your jokes are lame. No one finds you funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, so you, you want to you start, start and, and then different accents. You know, I met a lot of people, you know, there's Australian accents, a bit different with what we grew with. It was mainly American at the time. The terminologies are different. So sales cleaned all that. Love. So dealing with people, with different backgrounds, different accents, different attitudes, different behaviors. So sales was very powerful. A lot of training and in a big company like Nick Scali, um, it did end up putting me in a place where I was ready to take on the world. Wow, you know, that. so it, it was the best thing that I've done with that knowing. And that sometimes, you know, blessings happen uh, without us even seeing it. So yeah. that, that would have distracted your vision really. So most likely as youth growing up, studying computer engineering, whatever you were studying as well before that, you must have had a vision to say, you know, I'm going to be a computer engineer. Or, or, or. Did you have that vision? Like, at a, at Absolutely, a... absolutely. It changed my mindset. Look, I've always been into the business-minded um, approach. And I, I, and I have this thing. Back in the days, they always used to teach us, and this is just a personal um, opinion about the whole thing, is they used to teach us, um, do what you love. I mean, you know, it was always the big thing. But I don't believe in that when, I, when life got in. It's not just about doing what you love. It's about learning to love what you do. It reverses a wow. little bit. So it doesn't matter what you do, learn to love it. If it is providing you with halal income, if it's providing you with, you know, a happy family, if it's putting food on the table and, and you're upholding your responsibilities um, wherever you stand, then you should love it. Why wouldn't you love it? Mm. Now, it might not be exactly what you want to do, and I get it. Um, and I, I, I met a lady, it's just a quick story that I experienced. I met a lady um, on a plane coming to Melbourne, actually. And she was very upset. And I'm like, why are you crying for? And, and she was like, you can see it. And yeah. she goes, I just came back from England. And she stopped in Sydney because there was a weather issue. So they had a stopover in Sydney and then continued to Melbourne. She can't afford her rent. So she, feels, she thinks she's going to be kicked out as soon as she gets back. And she has nowhere to stay. Love. Wow. And I said, so you went on a holiday to the UK. You don't have money to pay your rent. Can you make sense of that to me a little bit? Because you didn't have to go on holiday. Like why? Why did you make the choice? And and what do you do for a living to a point that you come back and there's nothing? And she goes, "I am a photographer, and that's my hobby, and I like doing it. And, and it's the job that I do. I'm doing what I love." Yeah. And I said, "But what you love is not delivering the life that you 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 deserve and want. Why can't you do that as a hobby?" And do work where you can flourish in that matches your steel skill sets and things you like. Learn to love it. But don't dismiss mm. what you love. Just do it as a hobby. Do it in a way or focus on how you're going to build it up in a sustainable manner. Yes. So it's sort of a slight shift in the mindset. Exactly. Yes. On It's not about letting go of what you love. It's not about that. But it's about making sure that you also love the things that yeah. provide you. Love yes. the people that are good to you. Love mm. the environment of the country you live in that provides you a good place. It's, it's changing the mindset that mm. learning to love, even though it's not exactly what you want. Yeah. Now, let me ask you a question, and it's a, not a controversial question, just a simple question, given that you guys are food people. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if I ask you, what's the core business of Domino's Pizza? What would you tell me? For me, it's uh, delivery. Their, their, their core business is delivery. They're, they're an Uber, or, but in, in the food game. I, yeah. under my understanding. From my understanding, they are the utmost technology company in the food industry. They are so technology driven. I know that they've, I've read about their camera where it tracks the pizza and there's exactly how much topping there is. It yeah. tracks every order. The technology is un, 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 unheard of compared Absolutely. to everybody. So, so Domino's Pizza is actually a technology company that happens to sell pizza. And, and that change happened in 2004 when the, the company was collapsing. Right? The shares were running at $3 a share. They were hitting the ground and they didn't know how to work it out. They started get, doing customer surveys and the surveys were talking about your pizza tastes like cardboard. I mean, it's interesting what cardboard tastes like because I don't know, <laughs> but that's what people <laughs> said, right? So, so Domino's Pizza, or the CEO that was hired at the time, he was brilliant, right? He said, because we're focusing on the wrong things. Let's get the feedback from the clients. Let's get him on the journey. But let's change the concept. How can we specialize 
in in the what we do and be better than everyone else. Mm. So he, they, they changed the concept to become a technology company. So 80% of their employees are IT. Wow. IT personnel. Wow. Not chefs, not that. It's IT. And how do you how do you attract people? If you want to become good at technology, how do you attract IT personnel while you repeat the company? Because they're going to go work. The good ones are going to go work for yeah. Microsofts or Googles yeah. of the world or that C-suite company. So why would I work for them in pizza to become a computer <laughs> engineer? So, See how, so they had to change the narrative and turn it into a technology company that happens to sell pizza. Now the shares are running at, at the moment 400, it was $550. And if you monitor the growth, one, it's the largest um, food chain company in the world now. Hello. You know, it's huge. So think about creativity in business. Where does it come from? A big part of it was including the youth into the planning. Wow, oh, yeah. You know? How can you get creative with your business? How can, can you can get creative with your life? How can you get creative with your education? That's what sets you apart. So when we talk about Domino's, everyone thinks it's a pizza making or a delivery making or this, that, but it's actually just a technology company that wow. happens to sell pizza. Wow. Mm, so wow. I'm giving this an example. Apply that to everything else in, in life and you re realize that the, the difference between successful and not successful is finding the right point of difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is it really that you're doing? You know, we know some restaurant chains that they seem to be food companies, but they are asset management companies. Yeah, yeah. They run port asset portfolios. portfolios and, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's their actual yeah. real core of the business. That's, that's the intent. Yeah. Yeah. Subhanallah. And it gets yeah. back to the intent again. Yeah. yeah. Subhanallah. Yeah. I just want to touch base on, subhanallah, at a young age, uh, our dad, Allah Hamu, would always tell us stories and just touching base on your coaching versus mentoring and subhanallah one of the sheikhs i think it was imam shafi or imam al hanbali he was tell, dad was telling us a story in relation to because he was he was the imam of Masr at the time or the uh, imam of iraq at the time mm -hmm. so he was the man and apparently uh, the story goes that a man would would come up to the sheikh every friday prayer and ask him sheikh now can you give us a khutbah about freeing a slave mm -hmm. And continuously for six months, he'd ask him this question. With no avail, the sheikh did not give a khutbah. But what had happened at the time, the man had traveled, and lo and behold, the sheikh gave a khutbah about freeing a slave. Mm. And he was furious. Furious enough to actually walk into the sheikh's quarters and actually, uh, uh, you know, question, question the sheikh. How dare you? I've been asking for over six months. You didn't, you know, give me the, the information. I've been asking you patiently every Friday. Mm. And now it happens that I'm, while I'm away and the sheikh started crying and, and he said to him, when you asked me the question, I've never owned a slave. How can I talk about a topic that I've never owned? Yeah. So he, the story goes, he, he, he saved up first for the first month, saved up enough to buy a slave. And then he bought a slave and then he actually... Really it got him, got him working and living with him, and after six months he freed him. So now he was able to talk about the topic from experience. From experience. It makes a huge difference when, when you know, and and that's mentorship is so powerful. That's mentorship because I can tell you, this is your challenge. When I faced similar challenge, this is what I did. This is what happened. This is the outcome that I got out of it. Yes. And then you can look at it and decide if that works for you or not. And it reminds me because it it might not work for you. So yeah, if yeah. I give you coaching or advice, because I'm, I'm an anti-advice person, I don't think we should give advice to each other. I think we should give learned experiences that I are mean, based on track records. Yes, sir. And then you as a person can pick from it what actually works for you. Absolutely. And as an example, if a comedian goes up there and is very funny and can do, you know, funny things, and then another, you know, new startup <laughs> comedian asks for some hints, the person gives them advice on what to do. The second person will go in there and it will not work for them. Yes. Right? Or, or might not work for them. And the difference is it could be just your personality. So the advice could be correct, but it doesn't work for you. Yeah. So we need to have self-discipline into being able to analyze, spend a good effort into knowing if, if that story, that mentorship story, works for me or not, yeah. or do I take pieces from it or not? Yes, yes. You know, and that's very important for the young yes. generation that they, they have this, the intelligence, they have the energy, they have everything, but they like one thing, it's experience.
Yes. So if they can pick different experiences from people that have done it before, you will do way faster, way yeah, better. Hundred yeah. percent. And this is this is the key: is always leaning onto people who have done it before. Yeah. You know, if you know, this is the key. If you don't know anybody, find that somebody who's done it. And, yeah. and I swear to God, like, it you might find one, two, three, four people, and the first person might not help you, but the fourth might. And the majority of so, people are willing to support and help. Well, yeah. Ah, uh, well, uh, there, there hasn't been a person that I've won up to and asked. That hasn't somehow asking the right questions. Yeah. Right question. right. Asking the right question. It's, it's not right. any question yeah. because you gotta prepare for it. You have to, and you have to take it on board. You're yeah. willing to endorse the conversation. Yes. You know because you don't yeah. want to waste people's time. Yeah, right. <laughs> you want to have a conversation where <laughs> you can, we've, some we've people come on to have conversations with me just to challenge me. <laughs> I'm okay with a good debate, by the way. I think debate is one of us learned something. But come in with the mindset is I'm going to debate and I'm going to debate hard. I'm going to be ready for the debate. But I'll walk away with an answer and I'll do something about it. Yes. yes. That, and then I'm okay with that. But don't debate me. I think go home and do nothing. Then <laughs> you're wasting my time at that point. SubhanAllah, you know? you're right. All right, going back to, to this story, mashallah, and mashallah, you've had a main story. Uh, I want to know really deep inside, you know, what drove you? Like, what was that drive that you had inside you to sort of keep moving? Mashallah, you've, you've grown through industries and you know, and what is that that you have in you that we inshallah can distill in our brothers and sisters out there that they can see that uh, in the fire, what is that fire inside you that makes you keep going every day? Look, the the passion around delivering my my mission in life, I have a very, very strong purpose and I'm very clear about my purpose. There's no ifs and buts about it. I know exactly what I need to do and when I need to do it and how I need to do it. So now it's only down to the execution part and, and I accept the challenges that comes with that. Um, what is that? So, well, helping people and changing people's lives through success. Um, if I believe that, you know, if the more successful I can be, the more people that I can help. Yeah. And and it's, it, it's not about, um, you know, not running a business because how can you help you when you're running a business? No, no, no. It's about running a very successful business that I can help more people than anyone else can. And I do that. I mean, we, we do a lot of projects outside of our core business just because we are in the business the way we are. Uh-huh. You know, so it creates a different um, mindset into it. You know, and, and being purpose-driven is so powerful. It is. You know, two things that I, and I always say, there's a lot of recipes of success. And I've read Amen. books and books and books about this. But there's two <laughs> things that always sit in my head. One is loyalty. If you're not loyal to your mission, if you're not loyal to your purpose, if you're not loyal to the people around you, if you're not loyal to your belief system, Damn. then you don't go anywhere. Okay. And the second one is determination. I literally do not stop until I get it done. Yeah. And 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 I mean it by like if you know me as a person in depth, I am a very determined person. Yes. I put the goal and the purpose and the mission, and then I don't stop. You know, it, and, and that's very important to realize that if, you, if success doesn't just come easy, it's a self-motivation, it's a, it's a mindset that you have to change, and it's a personality that you have to adjust. I work to my personality, I work to myself, because how do you stay relevant to your cause with all the challenges that you face as a leader? Because as you grow in business, your problems grow with it. <laughs> yeah. People think problems get smaller. <laughs> they, get they don't bigger. get smaller, right? <laughs> they, get, so, they get bigger because you really, you, yeah. you're growing even more. Yeah, absolutely. So how do you stay sane in the middle of all of this? You have to work on yourself, creating that self-centered approach Super. where you're always keeping that, you know, maturity in your conversations, this um, placid approach that you're approachable and then continuing to learn. Because... Um, this is in my in my opinion. Every seven years, as a CEO, as a leader, you become redundant to your to your place unless you continuously grow yourself and learn. Mm. Otherwise, you become irrelevant. Mm. I mean, let's face it. Seven years ago, the, the things that we faced are very different than the seven years yeah, you know from now on. So unless you're educating yourself and getting mentors yourself, and I've got mentors, and I mentor people. I but when I find my mentors, I don't just go get mentored by people. I find people that are very powerful people are very strong and i ask them can you mentor me on this that is specific to their area and i have multiple mentors because i don't think you should have one mentor exactly 100%. And, i know mashallah you've uh, you know cont- uh, you've been with richard branson mashallah yes. i know that uh, you've had amazing contact with him and 
he must have passed on some amazing stuff. Absolutely, he's a, he's a great man. I spent four days in his house, and um, and how did that uh, take place? Look, I, I, I'm part of a, a business group that uh, you know that um, a, a lot around education and, and mentoring and things like that. And Richard Branson is a person that I've always looked up to. I know what. Now, one of the scariest things of meeting someone you like is sometimes when you meet him, you don't like them. Right? <laughs> so, and, and that happened before. But let me tell you, I went in there liking Richard Branson um, 100%. I walked away liking him 500%. Well, oh, wow. Um, an amazing man, very humble man. But the learnings and the happiness to share that this guy had was amazing. It's actually an inspirational in a way because he is a very humble man that is willing to share. Love. If he feels that you're going to learn it, you're going to pick something from it. Mm. That's not a waste of time. It's That's worthwhile. Wow. Wow. Please share with us, uh, sir. Make us be part of the four days. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And he's a great chess player. We played a lot oh, of chess. Oh, wow. So you play chess? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're we going to have chess, a go. Him and I. Absolutely. No, I love time. chess as well. Yeah. So we, we've had, uh, I'm, I might be heading there again next year. Um, Fantastic. And, you know, and I'm looking forward to it. Mashallah. Allah, my barak, ya Rab. So go, going back to your sort of struggles throughout, you know, I think moving on from sales and moving into your next chapter. Uh, yes. How did that happen? What, what happened? What changed? It's a, it's a very, um, a, a very personal story that I, I, I don't commonly share, but I've shared it recently, so I'll share it again. Oh, and I've had a principle behind not sharing it. It's, 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 I don't like to always capitalize on the things that I, you know, really do it out of my heart. Oh, my um, and it's very important for me sometimes to keep it separate. So even yeah. though it motivated me, but I got asked a lot that question. <laughs> Subhanallah. <laughs> so it, it, my mind is always into business and creativity and growth. I've had that since uni days. I've had, um, you know, tourism business that I did when I was at uni and it was quite successful and I did other things. Um. But one day I met a lady on a train and, um, and, and she was quite elderly and she was quite upset. And I asked her, are you, and I, I got this thing about me, by the way, I do that. Like, if I see anyone upset, I was like, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> we need that. I, I, a stranger asking, are you okay, is a good thing because he can share without having to worry. Yeah. So, so I was asked, are you okay? And, and I asked her, are you okay? And she like, told me a story that was quite sad. And as the conversation went on the train, um, she had some bags, said, would you like help? Helped her out, took her to her house. And it was quite messy. So I went in and I cleaned it. And, and from there, I built a relationship with that lady on a, for a period of time until she passed away. But the, 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 the moral of that story is, in the beginning, my mind was going, I'm helping an elderly person. So every day, every week, sorry, I'd go in and I would, would spend a few hours just doing a couple of things and do shopping. And I'm enjoying it. Like, you know, it's fine. But in my head, it was all about me helping a person. But then when she passed, I had this empty moment that I wasn't helping her. She was helping me Love. because, yeah, I had my immediate family and, and my wife and my kids and, and all that, but I don't have my family. And she was the closest I could have for a family, a person that I could visit on my own. And that had a moment for me that I kept it to myself. I didn't share it. That was my moment. I only Love. shared it. Literally about two weeks ago. Allah um, I don't usually share. I don't like to share much because I don't want to capitalize on it. This is my yeah. Allah. Thing. So, of giving. So that, you know, and, and that just was a light bulb into doing good feels good. Yeah. You know, so it changed my mindset. I quit. Uh, and at the time I was doing like a corporate work into, you know, uh, senior management, high income. Uh, my income was great. <laughs> Having like everything was we stable. call it the comfort zone. I'm, I'm comfort zone. I'm <laughs> comfort comfortable. Yeah. And the decision to walk away from comfort zone, it's cut back my wages completely to the quarter, <laughs> joined disability organization as a support worker, completely by choice. Allah. Didn't have to. I was on the top of my game where I was, and and I just walked away and decided to help people. And sometimes I question myself. Did I make the right decision? <laughs> of course. You know, I'm, I'm started to struggle a little bit. You know, and. Uh, <laughs> But I always came back into, you know, it just feels right. Well, it feels good. Means. And then I decided that I can make it here by helping people. So I started studying and did my three, four diploma in disability and community services, education. And so I started complete, rolling complete up. Complete new path. 180% oh, shift. Wow. Complete by choice. Completely conscious decision. Just want to help. Just want to help. Love it, work but it made you feel alive. It just, I just, I, I could see that I, I'm, I'm capable of succeeding. I know that I can succeed. 
So mm-hmm. if I could succeed while helping people, that is exactly my purpose. That's what I want to do. Oh, I want to wow. help people and succeed. Wow. You know, and how can I combine that? So I took the journey right from scratch, and I I was focused. So I knew started, exactly. We started right, right bottom end, right? Really, bottom, bottom end, bottom end. Wow, bottom, bottom end, end. Wow. proudly. And uh, you know, I kept building it up to management. Then I went into government for a while. Then went back into the private sector. Then I went into executive management teams, and and I started growing my career throughout. And my income ended up being quite good after a while, and built up that, and then went into the private. What, sector. what was that window? What was that window? How In long, terms of how long that took? Uh, time. So um, 2011 was the shift the, the across. Decision. And 2016 is when Tender Loving Care started. Five wow. years. Five years. So, so, so that's the groundwork really for Tender Loving Care. Yeah. SubhanAllah. Yeah. And, and, and you're sort of, when you got into that sort of uh, train ride, uh, did you have sort of a vision of Tender Loving Care at all? Or, or did it build up um, across the my, my vision was building myself up as a person to become a leader. So so when I first came and I had a bit of struggles in finding a job and all these things, I had a moment where I said to myself, I will never face that again. I will do everything in my power wow. to not have to chase for jobs anymore. Okay, And the only way to do that is be, you become special and powerful in what you do. And so I, there was a huge focus for me into becoming the best of the best at everything I did. So even when I worked in sales at Nick's Valley, I was very successful there. I was one of the top 10 salespeople when I became a manager. I managed the Mopac store, which is like the baby store. It's the eastern suburb type of, mm. you know, so they love that store. And and I got supported through that journey significantly. But I had to work hard on it. I'm a migrant at the end of the day. So I had to work on that. I remember my first training at Nick's Valley, and they started using technical language. I spoke English before I came to Australia, but English that you learn in textbooks, and I remember I used to have a pen and paper and I'd write, like my trainer would say something, I'd completely have no idea what it meant. <laughs> I'd, I'd write it down on a piece of paper and then go up and search it and, and learn about it on the side. So so you have to work for your success. You, does, you never get handed your success. Right? You have to work on it. And that's how it was. But I was never willing to give up. To accept it. Never. Was that that moment that, you know, not being able to find a job and a feeling like, of no value, you know, and again, I think every one of us has been there one day or another, 100%. where, you know, you can't find a job, everyone's telling you you're not valuable, yeah. or, you know, what do you bring to the table? And you, and, and you, you feel, you look at yourself and you think, self, you have a hard look at that mirror. You look at yourself and you think, man, I got a value you know, add, I got, I got, a, I got, I got, a, I got to invest in my Was that, like, that lowest moment you've had? Absolutely, look, it, 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 it came to a point, so I, when I came to Australia, one of the biggest things for me is independence. I don't want to ask my dad for money. Allah. It was a big thing. And he would help anything. My dad course, was an amazing yeah. man. But I don't want to ask for help. So when I hit those rock bottoms, it was about, I'm that close to ask for help. <laughs> Isn't it? You're a crossroad, aren't you? And that, that <laughs> killed me. Like, I, you know, and I, uh, I, don't, I, want, I don't want to be there. I don't, I don't, want, to, want, to I don't want to be there ever again. Because the fact of it is, I want to sit here one day, like I'm sitting with you now, and very proudly saying, I didn't ask. Love. I made it. Love. You know? And that's a very powerful moment. And I could see that. I, I knew that. I, was, I used to talk about that a lot back then. And I, and I didn't have a business back then. I was still working and battling and all that. But oh, I wow. said, I'm, one day I'll be sitting where I am and I will not be having to look for work because everyone will be wanting to hire me and I'll be the one chosen. I love so, the power and how do you do that? Not through arrogance. It's not arrogance. It's confidence. Skill sets that you have that are unique. But that's yeah. not a, it's an acquired skill. Yeah. Anyone, and I say that to everybody. It's an acquired skill. You can learn it. You can be there. One hundred percent. You just have to work. Yeah. You've got to bring well, value. Yeah, and, and I tell people, if you, what value do you bring to this business? What value do you bring to your family? What yeah. value? And if you can answer that question, <clears throat> and you can increase that value, yeah, you are valuable. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and, and, and that's yeah. why you can attract. That's why people chase you. So, when you are valuable yeah. when you're known yeah. to be the best in the game. Absolutely. Nice. But the, I think the hardest thing, like even when, when I have my staff and, and I'm trying to mentor them and I've got a group of managers and, and they're having problems and difficulties. And I'm like, if I was to ask you about a certain manager, give me five things he needs to work on. And they've got a list. Five is minimal. Oh. They've, they've got a list of 20 to things they need to work on. You know, their the vocabulary, their the approach, whatever it may be. And then I say to them, okay, give me five things about yourself. 
And that's the hardest. Mm-hmm. They, they can't, they're, they're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? But subhanAllah how we can find the weakness in people. But when it comes to ourselves, I think the, uh, speaking to most successful people uh, are the ones that are always constantly reflecting on how Never they can satisfied with who Never you satisfied. are. You? Yeah. Never. And our beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the best at that. Absolutely. You know what I mean? He always projected that. He never, he never, he, he was always constantly working on himself. Yeah. And showing us the best of examples. I agree. Subhanallah. The, the, there's this saying that if you stop learning, you start dying. It is. Right? Yeah. always uses that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's either you're growing yeah. or going. Uh, that's it. That's it. There's no, there's no second thought about it. You know? exactly. um, one of the things that I said on Saturday when we met at the, at the function is we are yesterday's future, but our kids are today's future. Yes. Amen, amen. Okay. So... How are we going to lead them to the right path with the least trial and error? No. A lot of people say, go trial and error. No, 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 no. Have new mistakes. Amen. Don't do my mistakes. Yes. Amen. Do your own mistakes. Yes. And then from mine, you'll be better than me. Yes. Amen. And that's what we want. We want our younger generations across the board to be better than us. I mean. Because the future is only bright with them, not us. Yes. And so there's some mistakes we can't make. Because we're not in that in that ethos at the moment. Yes. They are in a different ethos, subhanAllah. Yeah. Mm. And we can't make those mistakes because we're not living there. And I tell them, you know, we're not living in the virtual world at the moment. We can't yes. make virtual world mistakes. They are. Correct. You know what I mean? So you learn from us mm. and then you make those mistakes and learn from these worlds that you're in at the moment. Sure. And subhanAllah, mm. it's, it's, and that's the key is supporting that. And, and wallah, you know, I, I call it reverse mentoring. The amount of learning I get from mentoring brothers, younger people, they give me perspective that, oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> but he's that one <laughs> and, and it's amazing yeah. it's called reverse mentoring because they're mentoring me at the same time giving me new perspectives that I never had changes your mindset I know um, I did a I did a mentoring course with a gentleman called Vern Harnish he, he's the founder of EO he does a scaling up a program which is quite a powerful business tool but one of the things he said to me that I thought such a powerful thing and it makes sense right? what brought you here is not going to take you there, right? Wow. So you have to come to a point and look back and say, okay, what do I need to do different now mm. to get to the next level? And you can see that in businesses. How many mm. businesses will grow, 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 and then plateau? Mm. And then you keep trying, like we keep trying everything we've done before, it's just not working. But the whole idea is that you're doing what you've done before. <laughs> yeah, you need to revisit everything to take it to that next level. And how are you doing that? Now you apply that to your personal self, and think about, I'm here now, I'm satisfied, I'm getting comfortable, or I'm going to disrupt the next chapter of my life. And what brought me here is not going to br- bring, take amen, me there. Amen. I need to do something about now. Amen. So we need to also get mentored. We also need to go back and maybe study or maybe go and explore something new or something different or amen. learn something. Because if we stop... We go backwards. 100%. Time doesn't stop for anybody. 100%. Like, and, and, and and you're, so, you're so right. Well, uh, I mean, subhanAllah. We forget that. We forget yeah, that. And even us within us, I think it, it, we are holding, you know, we have to keep on holding that lantern and, and keep pushing it further so then we can pass that lantern even further down the road as well. Like, you know, we yeah. can't stop. We can't stop. The, no way. The, the question, we always question ourselves, right? And, and one of the biggest questions that we should always ask is what's next? And sometimes we, we, we get bogged into what's going wrong, but we forget to focus on what's going right, right? And that's a major problem because it holds us back. I mean, Things will go wrong. There's that's always fine. something going there's wrong. There's something wrong, right? So, going so wrong. what? <laughs> but the, 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 the mentality behind thinking about what's next in terms of what can I do about the next chapter of my life is important. I remember I was working in, a, in an organization and it was early stages in, in my career. And I, one of the ladies there, her name is Catherine, she won Employee of the Year. And I looked at her and I said, how do you get Employee, employee of the Year in an organization that has this many people? To be the one person out of everyone that is chosen to be the best. It's like almost impossible. Your odds are like very <laughs> minor, right? So the organization had like eight, 900 staff. Wow. So to be the one person out of 800, Yes, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work, all right? So some people think that's impossible, don't worry about it. Yeah. Or let's find out why she got it. What does she have that no one else has to be the employee of the year? So I walked up to her and I said to her, Catherine, I just want you to tell me why do you deserve to be the employee of the year? Wow. In your own words. Good question. Do you see your worth? 
or you don't. Mm. Because if people see your worth and you don't, that's already a problem, right? And then she told me about some of the creative work she's done. I'm like, you earned it. I get it now. You have to earn your place. You're not going to get given the place. Nobody gives mm. nothing. Following year, I got employee of the year. Oh, wow. Literally. Following year, because I did not stop the whole year. Wow. Until I got there. So again, it's that determination. Yes. But ask the best. You know? You ask the best. You yeah. ask the one that's got there. How did you get it? And it made sense. And, I and she shared. She shared. She <laughs> shared. Of when Allah. you're on top of, of the game, you all share. share. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because you're not competing anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that amazing? So, Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yes, exactly so ask the right. top. <laughs> because he will tell yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I love Akbar Amin. So it's, a, love it's, a, Akbar. it's a big thing for me. You know, mentorship is a big part of my life. I pick I my mentors. Him. I chase it. But see, what's the best mentor you've ever had? What is the greatest mentor? So far, I'm saying, I know we're moving forward, inshallah. Okay. <laughs> so g- give me, give me, I give me the I can't give credit triple. one over the other. Come on. I, can, <laughs> I can tell you a few people that I... All right. I have a few friends that I, that, that you know, always tell me things that I, I find uh, fascinating. Um, you know, Richard Branson was definitely... Uh, on the top of the list is an amazing man. Um, Vern Harnish was great. Um, conversations with people that are, are my friends, so not even in the mentor capacity, but um, they are my mentors without them even knowing yeah, they're my yeah, mentors. Yes, we have so um, many of them. A friend of mine, Clovis Young, um, who um, the CEO of Mad Mix, is, a, is an amazing man, very intelligent man, and a, you know one of the people that I love having conversations with, and wow. I learn a lot from him. Um, uh, well, Susan Wilden, who heads Airbnb, she's an amazing, amazing, intelligent lady, that very powerful leader. So, so it's about the people you hang with. Yeah. Talal Yassin is an amazing Shalala person. Is amazing, he's, uh, you know, Talal is uh, is a friend, but he also is a mentor, and I love having conversations with him. Such a forward all thinker. the time. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. There's plenty of people in our community as well. Like, you know, I mean, you guys, we always have beautiful conversations. It's about the moment. So every every human being has this thing. It's called the moment in the moment. Okay. And it, we all face it. Okay. The difference between one person and another is how you act on it. Okay. So for example, I might see here and tell you the concept of what brought you here is never going to take you there. Now, some people say, yeah, that that, that, that makes sense. And then you go home and do nothing. Do nothing. <laughs> <Yes. Right? laughs> other people say, this, that's my moment now. I need to do something different in my business. And then go back and revisit and change and do something about it. So the moment in the moment is, an, is, a, is a time, at a point of time, that something triggers you. And you have the choice to act on it or ignore it. Awesome. I always act on it. I look for it. I don't just act on it. I actually, every conversation I have, I look for that moment. Okay. In the we moment. want those moments. Tell us. Because tell us about your moments. <laughs> yeah. so, so I love it. I love it. So tell us the about lady, those the moments. The lady on the train is a moment in the yeah. moment. Yeah. My, uh, my, my immigration to Australia is a moment in the moment. I didn't come here because I had this big plan that I knew exactly where I would be sitting today. But what I knew is it's time for me to take the next chapter. That's when was that moment that, you know, I know, mashallah, like, you know, we met you when you opened Melbourne because I don't know, you were in Sydney. Yes, yeah, Your first, first, first meeting yes. we had, how Yeah, and, 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 and we happened to be one of your guest speakers correct, correct. through an employee. So, subhanAllah. <laughs> so we, we, we were there, met you, and subhanAllah, mashallah, like, I was trying to figure out who the owner was, and there you were <laughs> cleaning up and fixing and, and moving around, and I, I didn't even think you were the owner, honestly. Like, you know, and then subhanAllah, Sue comes up, and, and she goes, I've got to introduce you to you. And I was like, okay, all right. And then she goes, this guy's oh, subhanAllah. Yeah. And subhanAllah, the, how you how I saw you in that light, not knowing who you are. And it's amazing, mashallah. And mashallah, you grew in my amazingly. Like, and I love leadership that is hands-on. Hands on, yeah. You know what I mean? In, in the field, doing, in there. You know what I mean? And mashallah, and I, and I automatically valued you amazingly. You know what I mean? Mashallah, like. So subhanallah, we met there and you opened Melbourne. But then where did you go? Like, in, of course, the moment of the moment that we opened up Melbourne. But when did you decide, go, you know what? I'm going to go national now, international. Yeah. You know? So, so, um, just just a quick comment on getting my hands there into the job. I believe that if I ask my team to do something, um, I'm more than happy to do it. As yeah, equally, same way, the same. Um, I work with clients still today by choice, and I love it. Um, I go down to the programs and I say hello to the guys. I mingle with them because this is why I'm in business, right? To see this happiness on people's mm-hmm. faces, and I I don't say that we always get it right. <laughs> but, you know, when we get it right, we celebrate it. And when we get it wrong, we do something about Amen. it. And that's the difference. 
um, back to the growth mentality and mindset, right? Now, if, if you want to be the best of the best, you need to start thinking differently. And you have to apply a level of education and knowledge and experience. You don't just succeed uh, by luck. You might have a level of success by luck sometimes, but it does not continue and it's not sustainable mm. unless you have some sort of a level of education on how you run your business. Yep. Okay. It, it makes you different experience, knowledge, and education wins every time. Every time. Okay. So when I look, I look at, at the time and I was like, I was running a quite a large size business. And right before the pandemic, we did a SWOT analysis, our strategic planning, we do an educated approach. I was start looking, what are our threats to the mission that we are on? What are the things that could shake what we're doing? Wow. And what are the hurdles of being very creative and helping people outside of what we usually do? And we've had a couple of things that came out. One of the threats is we were 100% government funded. It's beautiful when things are beautiful, but government is government. They change policy, they mm. look at budgets, you know, all that kind of yes. stuff. Right? So the risk is too high. If wow. that happened, what happens to, to our business? It could completely shut down. Yeah. So we need to mitigate that risk. Kind of law, yeah. The second thing is, how can I help more people? Now, if you're funded by the government, and it's beautiful, and the government's doing great things, but at the end of the day, it's limiting and it's, it has very clear guidelines around how you can utilize the funding. So if I want tomorrow to take this funding and go open a hospital to help people in a different country, I can't. Mm -hmm. If I, I want to go and um, do well for you know, people to, to get to drink water, I can't. So it limits what how, you still can help people with it, and it's helping people, and we're still taking and still doing the, the right things by that. However, it is limiting. Now, with, with my thinking, how can I take it to the next level? Go outside of the umbrella of the government funding, focus on commercialized revenue where I can support people more with a lot more freedom. Nice. So we do have a hospital, we do have schools for certain places. We, um, you know, we do build wells, but we also did something a lot more powerful. So we decided that we're going to start an arm um, where it's a food and beverage business. And everyone's like, food and beverage, you're a disability provider. <laughs> but hang on a second. What we did is significant. Because we opened a commercialized arm. We imported feta cheese and we now, um, you know, launching our export arm with SPC, if you know SPC Foods. So, and the idea of it is 70% of our employees are going to be people with disability. So we're employing currently, that's running currently, 70% of the employees of Wow. That business are people with disability. The beauty of it is they're wow. getting paid like you and I get paid. Mashallah. And it's non government funded. We're funding that completely from scratch. There's no wow. money comes from the government. Hello. So how do you do that? Amazing. How do you pay people wages unless the business has to be running as a business? And that's what I'm saying. Running a successful business doesn't mean you can't help people. It means you can help more people. Exactly. So that's what we've done. This is just one of the initiatives we created. Amazing. And by that, we created a commercialized revenue outside of government funding. So this is the organization that's stronger. We started to create other platforms. We went to international, even in the disability sector, but our source of revenue became different countries. So we're not relying on the one source of income. So as a business, you're creating a sustainable growth in the business and you're reducing your risks, which is very important. I want to really showcase yourself, inshallah. And sure. um, I'd love to hear who you are and... Uh, as a person and, and how do you define yourself as I am, you know, I am simple. I find myself very simple. People don't think I'm simple. And a lot of people. It's amazing how different people use different words. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you are simple. I love that. I, I like, it doesn't mean that what I do is simple, but as a person, my expectations from business is very high. My expectations from people is very humble. And, 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 and that, that makes me a simple person, in my opinion anyway. Um, mm. I like people and I like connections. I really do. Um, I don't find myself better than anyone. I find that we're all um, part of a cake and we all complete the cake. Really? Everyone plays their piece. The cake is nice and beautiful. So At, at that level, mashallah, and I understand that. But the one, one I'm trying to dig into is <laughs> how do you humble yourself? Mashallah, your successes. And, and, you know, you can see... Now people look at you, you know, I was watching SubhanAllah and then the function on Saturday night, you know, like they star glaze when they see you, mashallah, you know what I mean? Because mashallah, your successes are amazing. How do you humble yourself to be you soft gentleman that we know? Um, 
<laughs> I'll, t- I'll tell you. I'll tell you something. He's diving in, isn't he? Because <laughs> his son told us he's, he's not as smart as he thinks. <laughs> I'll I'll tell you very in, in, interesting. It's actually um, a big part. Of, there's a couple of things. A couple of things. Um, but one one of them is is a very powerful story that I learned from, and I actually do it for real. This is a true story, which. You know, I'll tap into it because you really want me to tap into it. <laughs> I love it. I love so, it. so when I was um, uh, when I was younger, uh, in my uni days, I had, I had a period of time where I did, you know, successful. I was a successful basketball player. I did a bit of modeling and that kind of stuff. And I had a bit of popularity around uni. Uh, so I used well. to feel like I'm the man, <laughs> you know. I was young. I was very young, 20, <laughs> 19. The ego kicked in. So huh? I was like, yeah, <laughs> you know. No, I am. <laughs> and, and, and then one day, this is this is actually like very true, and it's it's funny you dug into that part. <laughs> no, no. Um, and then one day I was listening to um, religion stories and things to learn about life and things like that. And then there was a story about Sheikh Sharawi um, that he one day he he won an award, and he was in the car heading home from it. And Sheikh Sharawi was like, Yeah, Allah oh. Akbar, yeah. He was the man, a good man, humble, simple, yeah, all everything. Right? Was, and and he that's his story from his mouth. He um felt um a little bit of pride. You know, he felt like I'm 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 the man, the kind of thing, you know. <laughs> anyway. I've reached so, the I've reached the pinnacle. Well he was like He was you know, too. He somehow. was, you know. So anyway, and and he goes and as soon as it hit him, he's like, Oh my god, I'm now ego's getting to me. So he stopped the driver and he said, stop near the, in Egypt is on the roads, it's all these small little musallas, you know. And he stopped the driver on the side and he went in and cleaned the toilets. And, and, and he did that to humble himself, like, you are still a servant. doesn't matter how much you Allah achieve, Allah. right? Um, You're still here to serve a purpose. And the success is to serve a purpose. Don't forget that. And, and that story actually, till today, I apply it to myself. Um, a lot of the times when I get, like, I won some beautiful awards, and and I always say, and, and I don't know if you saw my a lot of my posts and things like that. But my team posts was like, our CEO did this. I'm like, hang on a second, credit to my team, because you can't be who you are without your yeah, team. 100%, right? yeah. So, um, but one of the things that I do is I'd go to the team and say, put me on rosters. I want to support people with disability, and to remind myself how fortunate I am, and I'm not better than anyone else. Mm-hmm. I've just got put in a place where I can do certain things for others. Wow. So I'm not wow. in it because I'm the greatest only. I'm not uh, in it because I'm in it because I have a purpose to serve. Wow. So you exercise it. You know, so I'm, I'm, it was only from that story and it just changed my whole concept. It's literally, and I remind myself and I'm like, I've done really well today. Like, <laughs> yeah, sir. You know, and, and I did clean toilets. This is wow. actually true. Up I until recently, by the way, that's not a long time ago. In COVID, I put my gowns in, went in and supported clients that had positive COVID when my staff were too worried to support so, COVID uh, positive cases. And we have people that needed help. And I'm like, how can I tell you to go support a, a person that has positive case when I'm sitting at home safe? Allah, Allah, Do you know what I mean? Wow. So I got in, put my masks on, and I went in and provided care for clients. In the office, I tell the guys, if you need someone to do personal care and, and there's a struggle or shortage, sometimes we cannot have females doing males and they have shortage mm-hmm. in that. I said, yeah. call me in, I'll come down and I'll do it. Oh, These no. things I put it in place, part of my practice, to keep myself grounded all the time. Isn't that amazing? It's just that yeah. one story. Yeah. How how, how it changes us. Like, it's amazing yeah. that you got that story. Yeah. How different which one of us has got different stories yeah. that have humbled us back down and understand that, you know, to, to be uh, honest, you know. Uh, I, look, I totally I totally agree. Like yesterday I cleaned the toilet. So I brought my staff in and I cleaned the toilet. And I said to them, that toilet, what does it look like? They look beautiful, pristine. I said, it doesn't matter what you do, do it with you. Yes. And this is another thing that people understand. Do it with purpose. doesn't matter what it is. In, this is embedded in my thinking. You understand? When I sit on my own before I sleep, I pray, please, God, don't let pride get to my heart. Allah. You know, this means, um, oh, God, please make me big in people's eyes to see me successful and see, see me good. I keep me small in my own eyes. Nice. Yeah, I don't want to see myself big. Yeah. I don't want to see myself yeah. the best of the best. Does that, does that come back to, like, you mentioned that some of the people you've met that you, you've aspired to be like, that they might disappoint you? Is that one of the cause? 
Look, that, that, I, that you also what? Yes, yes is it you no, like minded people? The reverse of that. It's the people that I met that I thought they could be arrogant and they turned out to be humble. Oh wow! I, so I don't I don't take lessons from people that I'm not supposed to take lessons from, even though there's lesson to be learned. I focus on the people that I should be learning from. Oh, and wow. So it's more the reverse. People it's the positive. Suck, it's, 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 positive. it's the positive perspective. Is, is someone successful yeah. at that level yet humble? I mean, I, I show some of the photos that I had with Richard Branson, for example. This guy is, is just a man. He's such a beautiful man. And I was like, hey, Richard, can we take a photo? And like he comes in and will put his hands around me and let's take a photo. He would come in and we're doing like ice bath and he would just come in and carry the, the ice and... He's got 120 people working on, in his house, and this guy is just in with us. You know, wow. I, and I'll share some of the videos there because I can't share it like all over, <laughs> but a, a beautiful man. And this is what I look at. You know, why is this guy humble? You know, he's got every reason not to be, I mean. yet he is. So this is, it's such an embedded thought in my head wow. that I pray it all the time because the, the fact is, it is so easy for ego to get too high. Yeah, it is so easy yeah. when you walk into a place and people just treat you like a star. Yeah. When you walk into and you apply for an award, I mean, I, I won one of the awards, 4,500 CEOs apply, I, I get the award. Lord. I'm thinking, Shall oh my God, that's yeah. awesome. I, saw them, I, I quickly change my mind. I'm like, hang on a second, this is God's blessing here. You just did your peace, but the bigger peace comes from God. Yeah. And this is not designed for me to just be the best. This is designed for me to help others. And it changes the narrative, changes the mindset. Isn't it, isn't it? Is that, you know yeah. what I mean? I mean? We love to dive in into, because it's so many lessons. So many lessons so many that we lessons. learned. And, and, and alhamdulillah, you know, we've had neurosurgeons also say this very similar thing. They, they clean the actual yeah, surgery. Only neuros, after, after, after cleans his surgery. Yeah. After, after his surgery. After his surgery, just to keep himself humble. Yeah. Subhanallah. And Allah subhanallah, every one of us does something different you to humble to ourselves. It, yeah. Yeah. And, and subhanallah, and that's what I, I always recommend our youth, you know, do something that humbles you. Do something we're too, that humbles you. We're too vulnerable. And, and we don't realize that. It doesn't matter how strong or big you are, you're vulnerable. Yeah. And the only way to protect yourself against this vulnerability is by taking steps towards you know, improving that. Yeah. So you have to do something about it. I mean, don't sit there and take the beating. Yeah. Do something about it. I mean, you know, so. I, I saw that, mashallah, like when we first met, I said, mashallah, you know, he's a master connector. He, you know, he's, he knows what he's doing. He knows how to connect. And, and you can see his humbleness within that connection, you know. And I, I'd love to, sh you know, for you to share, how did you sort of build that know-how and knowledge within yourself to build masterful connections? And Especially being a migrant as well. Especially being a Muslim no, as well. No family here, no friends, school, yeah. no year 12, 11. Because, <laughs> you know, as you know, your net worth is your network, you know. Without your network, you can't do much, as we know. But, mashallah, like, you know, you've I'll answer that. that. One, of the, one of the most powerful things when you go to an interview, any interviews, whether it's this type of interviews or a job interview even, is you ask a question first. Right? You interview the interviewer. So I'm going to ask you a question and I'll tell you the answer based on your answer. But just do it very short and straight to the point. Yes. All right, because I need to get to something. Let's go. Let's go. Why do you like having chats with me? Why, do you, why did you connect with me? And I didn't know you saw that there's a humble guy that you didn't realize he was going, he's not walking there arrogant thinking he's on top of the world. I get all that. But what is the one thing? What does that all mean in one word? For me, the reason I connected with you, yeah. brotherhood. So... So I add value to you. Yeah, as a brother, of course. Correct? Yes. So whether it's brotherhood, whether it's mentorship sometimes, whether it's, uh, you know. So, and this is the key. In any relationship that you have with anyone in your life, if there is no value add that you add to them and they add to you, this relationship is, is, is heading to break up. It's not going to last. Amen. So there is always a value add in connection, right? So how do you build connections when you're a migrant and... And, you know, trying to build all the things. I had to create a platform for myself that people know as a fact, know as a fact, that if we talk to this mysterious guy that is so simple and nice, but there's something about him, he's going to add value to us. Oh. Let's go up and talk to him. Yeah. This, is a, this is a very important thing to, to, to realize. And I ask you that question purely because... You add value to me. There's no question about that. Know, we do you know? brothers. Especially. And when, when, you, when you have relationships that are based on those value adds all the time, it creates a, a very beautiful relationship that has meaning. Yeah, meaning. It's not, you know, it's not, I'm not guiding you to doing bad or you're not guiding mm -hmm. me to do bad. We're actually adding value to yes. each other. Yes. So if you want to connect with people properly, 
and attract these connections to you, what is your value add? What are you going to do about it? And and how you, how people are going to see it? Amen, you know, and that's very important. You become that person that people, you know what? I really want to talk to this guy. What is it about this guy? See that question. And I'm not taking it from an arrogance, but I'm talking from a value add point yeah. of view. You know, walking in, holding yourself well, building your knowledge, your experience. And when you talk, people listen because you don't talk rubbish, you talk yeah. valuable things. You know, so changing that and making sure that you, you know, you're very clear about this. Also, every moment has its own conversation. Don't mix it. Yeah. You know, if I'm in a if I'm in a fun environment or having a laugh, let's crack jokes. But if we're in a business conversation, then let's stick to that. Mm. If we are in a in a sharing experiences, then put your effort in and share. Don't just listen. Do you know? And so changing that adds value to people. And you've obviously implemented that in your business now. And absolutely, as much as I can. And look, and and as the more people you have, with more diversity, the more work you have to. Hello, do. you've nurtured right? that. You've nurtured that. You can say, mashallah, you know. And you got to constantly nurture it. But I do really care about my staff. Genuinely care about them a lot. And I, and, and I see myself as one of them and I see my successes because of them. So they play a big part. And I know people tell me, but it's about, it takes a special leader to have a special team and mm -hmm. it works. And I get all that. I completely get it. But they are why I enjoy the success. Oh, you know, it's not just about being successful. It's enjoying that, that journey, yeah. loving that journey. People sometimes love it with the fame or, or maybe the financial, you know, but, but that's not what actually keeps me going. What keeps me going is my team. So far in your journey, I think uh, looking at Mashallah, there's a lot to celebrate about what you've done. But what would be the thing that you felt the most notable thing for you to celebrate with your own self, that you celebrated for your own self? What was the thing that you got to where you felt, you know, as you know, we, we celebrate, you know, things, points within our lives, subhanAllah, you know? And what was that moment, you know, that you can say, so far, inshallah, we'll be celebrating bigger things together. Sure. Uh, but uh, what is that, that moment that you sort of look at yourself and say, you know, this is worthy, my celebration for myself? <laughs> not maybe not maybe not sharing with everybody, but you celebrate it with your own self, you know. Well, know. Look, um, outside of business, in business moments, I can share some of the things. I mean, w w winning the CEO Innovative Award of an Asia Pacific as a whole is a big thing for me. I'm mean, again, I'm that migrant that came in working it all out to, to, to be, you know, winning such a prestigious award is a big thing. Sure. But but the bigger moment that I would say I celebrate that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala God giving me the chance to look after my parents oh. in a time that, you know, and it was surely because being a migrant, you don't realize that you disconnect a bit. Even if you're caring and talking and going, you disconnect. And the pandemic, as I said it, that, that it was, it, I brought my parents here right before the pandemic. So, so they stayed with me throughout the pandemic. And my dad passed last year. So having the opportunity to be there for him and spend time and actually look after them, look after them the way I've always Amen. wanted, Allah. taking them on Hajj. I, we, we went right before 2019 Allah, and wow. I did Hajj with my parents. I pushed my, you know, my dad on the chair. Allah, Allah. Those things, what moments that I cannot, that um, amazing? cannot forget. So I, I don't think anything beats, you know, being able to be there for them. Yes. Um, well, I've always had a, always a problem of in my head, like, Am I going to be able to do that because they're living in, in Egypt? You know, subhanallah. And, and being stressed way too far that you don't go every year, you don't go that <laughs> yeah, often. Yeah, subhanallah. And my amazing. dad, if you ask my dad, um, what did he have to do? He would have said he works in, in, with people with disability. That's it. He Allah. actually had no idea Allah what Allah. I did. And when he came and lived here, he attended functions with me. I got a, a recognition from um, the Turkish government, from President Erdogan, a, a nice on very unique piece that was Allah. given to me and and he was there my dad was there my mom was there when i was presented with that with the turkish ambassador mm. you know these powerful moments that my yeah. dad you know got recognized in multiple functions and and you know people think it's the award is no, mm. no no it's them sitting in, in the yeah. crowd yeah. and my dad looks at me and goes my dad actually teased one day he goes i didn't know he he actually i think he said i'm sorry that i didn't put the effort to know i just didn't know Subhanallah. You know, that proud moment. Allah. And, you know, being able to do that is just Allah amazing. Allah. 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 Amazing. Thanks for sharing it. Thank you for sharing it. Allah. 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 They are the moments that are the most, you know. Subhanallah. Like, we're, we've got a few brothers in Melbourne. And Rahim, Subhanallah, we were talking about, you know, what brings us together as brothers, you know. Alhamdulillah, we've got a beautiful, diverse group of brothers that we connect with. And 
Hala were sitting there talking and Ipa goes, this, this group is 12 to 10 brothers, completely different worlds. Very unique, very yeah. different. Each one's come different industries. Some are practicing, some are not very, but it's just amazing. And then I said to him, what brings us together? And we said, everyone's muddy. To their parents. Everyone yeah. is like, it just, so, Every one of them, so, so beautiful to their mum and dad. After their parents, like one of the brothers, mashallah, he looked after his mum in her last nine days yeah. for, for know, how many years yeah. in his house, looking after, personally looking after. Mm. Another brother flies over to constantly Muradi. looking after his mother. And subhanAllah, and, and that's one thing that was so connected us, connected us so much is that we all of every one of us, subhanAllah, our parents are pleased with us. Mm. That, that's why you should, Allah Akbar. should tell, you don't tell the youth, um, Success comes from what? From with Allah who wrote well then. Yeah, Nothing beats that. And, and, for us, and if your parents are around, I mean, trust me, from, from a person that's been living in Australia for 20 years, that, you know, 15 out of those 20 didn't have his parents right next to him. No. Telling you if your parents, parents are around you, it's a blessing. Amen. Don't take it for granted. My dad, yeah. my dad called me the day before he passed and had the most amazing conversation with me about how much he's satisfied with me and how Allah. much he's very grateful. Literally, he just called Allah. me out of nowhere and he was planning to come back to Australia. Actually, we booked his ticket. The ticket was booked two weeks after Allah. he passed. Allah. And, um, and he Allah had the most amazing son. conversation with me the, the day before he passed. Allah. And, um, you know, and, and if I didn't have these few years that he stayed with me around Allah. the pandemic, I think I would have been a completely different. I'm actually okay with him passing. And when I say I'm okay Because I'm completely satisfied With God's will yes. And he passed The best way I wish I passed The way he passed You know no. So <laughs> it's a very <laughs> We're going to share we, with, We're we, going to share With you How we, our father we, passed we, we, we have the same we have, Like we, everyone we, thought We were crazy On we, dad's funeral we, 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 like, we, we were actually happy Because things happened That, that Allah You know like One of the brothers Come up to, come up to us And said I wish I passed like your father passed mm. And subhanAllah It's a long story But subhanAllah Um my, our father had a heart attack, went into hospital for six, seven months. Uh, we got him to hospital, we caught the golden staff, uh, getting out on Friday, uh, going through re, you know, the rehab. rehab, and the last days of rehab, slipped, hit his head that night in, in the hospital and cracked his skull. My mother, subhanAllah, was there. We walked in on that day. But through that six months, one of our siblings always spent the whole Top day with him. Yeah. We spent so time we were with forced him. for six months to spend time to with spend him. Spend time. One of us each day would be there. And we thought he was going to die from the heart attack. Then we yes, thought he was going to die from the golden staff. And then he healed. <laughs> he was going to come out. And because he has been sitting for such a long time, he had to get out and walk. You know, mm. you got to do the rehab. And in rehab, subhanAllah, he fell. And he hit on his skull. On the trip. On, on a drip. And, and he fell. SubhanAllah, the, the, the surgeon said to us, you know, look, you know, I don't think that can make it through this. As a wow. uh, we said, well, we take with Allah's will, do your best and whatever. And they did the surgery and then they said to him, look, he's got only an hour to live. So, we, you know, if you want to get somebody to say goodbye, mm -hmm. no, uh, please do. So, we, they gave us the I think the, three the, hours for that to yeah. so live. And SubhanAllah, they gave in us an ICU. Room. In ICU, they gave us our own room. Mm. And I so, we just room. put messages out to family and friends and, and Mashaykh that we knew. Yeah. And SubhanAllah, and we had a full room. Of a hundred people. hundred people. Shaykh Fermi, Allah Hamu. Oh, all, Shaykh, all the Mashaykh that Shaykh Fermi, Allah Hamu, the one that we mentioned. Yeah, 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 he yeah. was there. And other Mashaykh. Reading Quran yeah. before dad. And, and Bilal Asad right. was there, close friend of ours. Yeah, and, like even the people that were there, like, how's this, all came. how's this happening? How is there a hundred people in ICU? And they let us in, you know, imagine, like, literally, and we were all chanting, La ilaha illallah. Hey, that was my dad's last breath. La ilaha illallah, nonstop till his last breath. And subhanAllah, after he passed, one of the, Surgeons inside the doctor come up to me. He goes, Ahmed, I want to know uh, who's this man. What's happening? What, what is <laughs> happening? What did you guys? What were you guys saying? <laughs> I said, we're saying there's only oh, no. there's only one God worthy of worship. He goes, Ahmed, I just want to tell you something. Been in this place for what, thirty years, I've the never felt the calmness of death, a calmness of a place that Inshallah. things weren't going crazy. In the, you know, it's, it's I see you. You know what I mean? Yeah, People are dying. He goes, we just felt the calmness in the whole place. It's like That's everything right. stopped for that. Yeah. And, and subhanAllah, and that, and that for me was amazing. But not only that, that what happened, mm. subhanAllah, burying our father. Yeah, that was. Burying our father because, you know, he died in that state and he was frowning. Because that, he had tubes and, you know, that, you I know. don't know, if, if you've ever watched a body, you'll understand that 
you assume I've never watched the body till Dad's body. You assume that you could move the body and move the face, and but it doesn't. <laughs> doesn't. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. So what, Dad what, had a frown. Yeah, kind of like. whatever position it's in, no one knows. But it stays there. Like if your leg is one way, yeah, you cannot. Yeah. yeah, and I never knew that, you know. And and Subhanallah, like I said, to Ahmed, like you know, we were saying, like, well, we washed him, alhamdulillah. I said, Dad's face looks a bit, you know. Not, it looked like he's frowning. It you know what I mean? It doesn't, doesn't, look, doesn't look good, you know. And we wanted him to smile. So, you know, and I, so I tried to message his face. So he starts <laughs> laughing at me. And the guy that's washing the body's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to change his face. No, that doesn't happen. It's a vessel. <laughs> the blood's gone. SubhanAllah. Anyway, we wrapped Dad. And, you know, everyone says their goodbyes. You know, you can go uh, to the Jemia and you can see the body and say goodbyes. And SubhanAllah, me and Ahmed were putting Dad in the ground now. And a close friend of dad's that took him to Hajj goes, boys, can one of you step out so I can say my goodbyes? I didn't get the chance to go to the mosque. And I didn't want to step out. And I didn't want to step out. So I go, okay, it's the younger brother has to get up. Mm. So I'm, I'm going up now. And, 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 and mashallah, Sheikh Muhammad went down. And obviously he's revealed his face now to give him a kiss goodbye. He asked me, can I reveal his face? So I'm kissing goodbye. Right. I said, look, I've already said my goodbyes. You just unwrap him and wrap him quickly, yeah. please. So... So right. as I'm walking mm -hmm. up and he's going down, revealing kissing, and all we hear is Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. And I've looked down, obviously, the the, down to the grave, and Dad's got a smile from here to here now. And me and Ahmed, no, because we watched him. <laughs> we <laughs> messaged him like that. Yeah. <laughs> no. We messaged him, bro. I wanted to message him. And, we... and then he had this big smile, and everyone's screaming above the grave. Me, I'm sitting in the grave looking up, going, and they're all in Allah Akbar, look at my dad. And we're looking. And I'm going, Allah Akbar. Like, I'm talking about a smile. Not right, he had the like, biggest smile ever seen my dad have a smile. And so we didn't allow anybody to mourn. I said, if my dad's happy, we're happy. We're happy. Everyone's going to be happy. Because the, the, the bottom line is, they're not going to be here forever. Amen. I mean, we're not going to be here forever. No one. I mean. So, you know, it's the missing. We do miss yeah. him. Of course, 100%. 100%. You know, we're going to meet him, inshallah. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us. Have you can't stop us. it. So don't <laughs> argue about it. Don't get upset about it. Just <laughs> do yeah. it. Allah of course, with the sadness, but subhanAllah, we say we decided to celebrate. Mm. So yeah, we said, if, you, if you're going to come, you need to celebrate his life. Yeah. And I think we're the only one. We, we, yeah, had people thought we'll we had a lot of shukha come and we gave plants. So we gave plants to dads. You know yeah. how people give Qur'ans and they give CDs? Yeah. We actually gave plants. And we said, please bury this in, in, in the garden, in the garden and, and utilize it. You yeah. know, and everyone, everyone to this day uses the, what, we, what was it? We, we, we gave him a uh, small, uh, um, Bas Basil? Like, like a zatar. Zatar, it? yeah. It's a zatar. And to this day, I got dad's friend said, I'm still using a zatar. <laughs> so, yeah, we have yeah, people who put it with ice, they tool and we put it with <laughs> this. Oh, and so, like, we thought, what can we give that sort of lives on? Yeah. People remember him and make dua for him yeah. and Allah, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And subhanAllah, it's amazing. And this like, we share that sort of in a way, don't we? You know? yeah, yeah. Like we had the opportunity, alhamdulillah, to, to, you know, see him, you know, in the last moments yeah. and spend time with him. And so it's, I totally it's amazing. Agree. And we, the, we highly recommend our brothers and sisters, Allah, you do not know him and dad. how valuable it is to. It's a big thing and, and you don't know what it is gone. So yeah. we're telling you from experience. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Heavy duty experience. Do it right, spend time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean. Call every day, I mean. whatever it is. I mean, SubhanAllah, Allah, 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 Allah Inshallah. Amen. Allah, Allah, thanks for sharing never, that. Never, never inshallah. Inshallah, we don't give up ever. And inshallah, we only grow and inshallah we will have another conversation inshallah when inshallah. you're bigger and better and <laughs> doing more inshallah please uh, everyone make dua for our brother may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase him Amen. and grow him inshallah purely help as many people brothers and sisters along the way nationally Amen. internationally inshallah thank and thank you very much for sharing and uh, really appreciate your time and effort I like loved here. being here and, and it's always a pleasure seeing you guys I, you love the that, that, well, thank you I very hope much. I add value to I like everyone I love it. thank you for, for Speaking from the heart, that's that's what we try to do for the audience and for the Muslim community, just to say yeah. things from the heart, everything's from the heart. Alhamdulillah. Don't forget guys, please like and share. Uh, it's very important. Uh, we alhamdulillah do this for subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, we don't want anything more than inshallah to grow this channel as much as possible. So the more you subscribe, share and comment inshallah, the more it will go out inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.